from heaven. If you say, touch me, Lord, and let it be to me according to my faith, will you be able to say that? You say, touch me, and let it be to me according to my faith. Think about it. Do you have faith? You say, touch me, and let it be to me according to my faith. Because we use faith to put it in mind. Faith is a heavenly currency we use to purchase, to receive heavenly blessing. You know, healing is heavenly blessing. Deliverance is heavenly blessing. Salvation, they are all heavenly blessing. To receive this, faith is like a heavenly currency. You know, you want to purchase something in the market, you need money. When you get to the market, you begin to negotiate how much is this. They say five naira, you have three naira. That money is not enough. That does not mean you don't have money. If you get to the market, they say ten dollars, what you want to purchase, and you have nine dollars. You try to get your way. They say, no, it's ten dollars, and you have nine dollars. What you need to do, you go back and get more money. That does not mean you don't have money. So in the same day, when you say, heal me, heal me, and you are not here, that does not mean you don't have faith. It's only the measure of faith to purchase that healing you don't have. That is in your hand. Am I talking to you? Yes. So that is, you want to buy this in the market. On getting to the market, they say it's $10. But with you, you have $7. You begin to negotiate to bring the price. No, it's $10. So there's nothing you can do. You can't get that thing. But that does not mean you don't have money. In the same day, to receive that heavenly blessing we are all waiting for, you need heavenly currency to receive it. If you ask for something and you do not receive it, that does not mean you do not have faith. But the measure of faith you need to purchase, to receive, that you do not have. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples? When the father of demon possessed boy ran after Jesus, said, Jesus, I brought my son to your disciple for them to deliver him. They could not because they do not have power to do so. Jesus said, no, don't say that. This is blasphemy. They have power. But they lack the behavior of faith to release the power. That means they have power, but the behavior, the degree of faith, and that does not mean they do not have faith, but the degree, the amount of faith they need to get that power to deliver the boy. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open our Bible just a proof test. The book of Luke 6, verse 37. Judge not, and you shall not be what? Yes. Condemn not, and you shall not be what? Yes. Forgive, and you shall be what? Yes. Now, that should be the weapon now. If we say, touch me, and let it be to me, according to my faith. You mean, if you forgive others, you will be forgiven. If you condemn others, you will be what? Yes. If you show mercy to others, you will also receive what? Yes. That is what you are saying. 
that is God for you. That if I show mercy to others, I will receive mercy. If I help others, I will receive help. Because the Bible says, whatever you do to the least of my fellow, that you do to me. Are you with me? If you now say, oh, I help others, or you have not, but right now you are ready to help others, you should be ready to be helped. Or you have not been shown mercy, kindness to others, but coming here you have seen the reason you should show mercy and kindness to others in your heart. What you are saying now, if I should live here today, my life is a changed one. I'll help others, I'll show mercy to others. Now, you should be ready. God will not wait till when you live here and do that, but immediately now, you'll begin to receive that mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. That is God for you. That is the meaning of touch me and let it be to me, be to you, according to your what is faith? Without love, no faith. Without faith, no love. Love is the motto of faith. Love is life in faith. No love, no life in faith. No love, lifeless faith. Lifeless faith. Faithless. That is why many of us will say we have faith. It's faithless, you have faith, but no love. So, once again, mercy, mercy to others and be of help to others. Whatever you can do, do to see that your life is for the services of others. Trust me and let it be to me according to my faith. What kind of faith are you talking about? That is, you are saying, according to my love to others. That is what you are saying. That is, touch me and let it be to me according to my love to others. My kindness to others. My goodness to others. Touch me and let it be to me according. Rise up, rise up for prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the words of wisdom. Touch me and let it be to me according to my love to others. Touch me and let it be to me according to my kindness to others. Touch me, Lord, and let it be to me according to my blessing to others forgiveness to others these are ingredients of faith touch me Lord and let it be to me according to my mercy to other goodness to other kindness to other love to other help to other and forgiveness to other touch me Lord so it means that on this condition you can receive touch. On this condition you can receive what? You can receive touch. Touch from heaven. Because the Bible says faith releases the healing anointing. Faith releases the deliverance anointing. Faith releases the blessing anointing. So just mention. So if you now say, touch me, Lord, and let it be to me according to my love, my kindness, my blessing, help, forgiveness to others. So can you say on what condition now God touch? Huh? I mean the Lord touch you and you are healed. Your energy, your good health. For the services of others. May the Lord touch you and your business revived and you begin to have a good customer and order. 
the blessings also for the war. For the others. When the Lord touch you and you have breakthrough in your life, you are blessed to bless others. You are going to be delivered to deliver others. You are going to be healed to heal others. Take note of this word. Touch me, O Lord, and let it be to me according to my law, kindness, blessing, help, forgiveness to others. Touch me, when the Lord touch you, you are healed. When the Lord touch you, you are delivered. When you are touched, you are free. So that blessing you are waiting for now, like I have said, can only be received by faith, which is heavenly currency. You want to purchase something in the market, you carry money there. Heavenly blessing, healing, deliverance, they are heavenly things. You want to receive them, you need this heavenly currency to purchase them. Amount of currency you have will determine amount of blessing you receive. If you cannot receive today, does not mean you don't have faith. It is the degree of faith you need, you probably not have. The measure of faith you need, you probably not have. Now that you don't have faith, don't condemn yourself. That does not mean you are not a child of God. Like I used to say, that you shouldn't say because my prayer is not answered, I'm not a child of God. You are still a child of God. My prayer is not answered, I'm not a child of God. That is what the devil are using to disturb the children of God. When the devil knows you are not grounded in the word of God, he will now begin to wait. When what you ask from God, you are not received, he will come in and say, can you say you are not a child of God? Ah, your mind will begin to be disturbed. Truly, I'm not a child of God. If I'm a child of God, God should give me what I ask for. I've been on it for many years now. I keep asking God, give me, give me, give me. But other I receive them, I'm not receiving. The devil is the one doing that. You will just wait. See? When you offer prayer and it's not, I will come to you and say, can you see you are not a child of God? If you are a child of God, you should receive it now. Now see you, see you. And you become disturbed. Now you will now become more of devil. Because when you know that uh, your mind says, I'm not a child of God. What else again? You smoke the more. You lie the more. If I'm talking to you, let me see your hand. So these are the intrigues and tactics Satan are using to disturb the people of God. That you pray and you are not receive answer to your prayer does not mean you are not a child of God. What is happening there? Listen. Probably you don't have the degree, the measure of faith to receive that thing. I've given you a good example of money. You need ten dollars to purchase this. You need ten dollars to purchase this. Now on getting to the market, you never knew that you need ten dollars, but you have seven dollars. Get it to the market, you say I want to buy this. They say no. It's ten dollars. No, please, it's $6, $7, no, 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 it's $10. And you move around everywhere, they say $10. You have to go back and get enough money to purchase it. But that does not mean you don't have money. That does not mean you are poor. <laughs> to things of God now, you want to receive blessing from God, which are heavily blessing. You need heavenly currency to receive it. You want healing? You pray. You are not receiving healing. Probably you don't have the degree, the measure of faith to receive that healing. That does not mean you are not a child of God. That does not make you unbeliever. 
They just need to continue to press on, keep growing in faith, as to receive what you need from God. Because it's the measure to receive. Jesus said to his disciples, this kind, that is what Jesus means, this kind fruit can only be purchased by ten dollar, not seven dollar. That does not mean the disciple are devil or disciple are unbeliever. He said, pray and fast. You need to grow in faith to do that kind. So don't allow devil to disturb you. When you offer prayer, Father, I need this, and you are not receiving it, that does not make you unbelievers. You are still a Christian. All you need, you need the measure of faith to receive that kind. Hearing and obeying the word of God, grow your faith. Hearing and obeying, grow your what? Your faith. They will use this. You see people that are Christian yesterday and today they are pagan. Or uh, somebody see as a Christian, suddenly you now find him in the clubhouse. You say, what's happened? I, 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 want, I, I pray, pray, pray that I'm looking for a job. But no, 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 no answer to my prayer. So what am I wasting my time for? Let me go back to the wall. No. Satan use this, your prayer, your relationship with God. Instead you say, God, in Jesus' name, I need this, and you, 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 the answer is not yet come. Satan come immediately and say, no, you are not a child of God. Come to me. When Satan says you are not a child of God, he's telling you, come to me. Satan has his own way also. As Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. So when you say, Jesus, uh, Jesus, I need bread, and you are not received that bread, Satan will come and say, look, you are not a child of God. All ye that need bread, come to me. I have my bread. Immediately will come and say, all ye that labor, you are labor, you need bread, come to me. So, I will give you bread. You are not his child. That's why he's not giving you, but I will give you here. Come. I know everybody wants this. This one is not ten dollar, please, for your information. It's not ten dollar. <laughs> so your faith is lifted up. Let us see your hand. That you believe now that that you ask for something from God and you are not receiving does not make you unbeliever. I can hear your voice. Take note of that. That you are sick and you are praying and fasting and praying and you are not receiving healing, you are not receiving any response from God does not make you unbeliever. Yeah. Eh? Thank you. Don't let Satan talk to your heart. 99% that become unbeliever today, this is the word Satan uses. You wait for that any time you ask for God something and answer is not come, you talk to your heart. You begin to look for charm. You begin to look for spiritualness. You begin to look for abilities. You begin to look for alternatives. That is the work of Satan. You begin to waver. You that go to church all the time, you say, I'm not going to church. My going to church, what is your posh car you used to come to church all the time? Suddenly, knock engine. At that moment, no money. You ask yourself, What have I done? I pay my tithe, I come to church regularly. Why should this thing happen to me? What will I use to carry my family to church? That is a work of Satan. You are more of Christian, that is why that attack comes. Tell your neighbor, you are more of Christian. I say you are more of God. That is why that attack comes. Anything close to God resists attack. If 
you are going to ah, too close, too close, you begin to keep the commandment, keep everything. Too close to God, too close to God. It's, Satan is, is disturbed. But when you begin to weak, weak in your relationship with God, Satan there will be laughing. Thank, thank. Hey, that's good, that's good, that's good. It's coming back, it's coming back. That's good, that's good, that's good. It's coming back. He will be blowing you with air, cool air. Come back. Thank you, come back. Thank you, come back. Hey, 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 hey. When you are getting, uh, when should, when Jesus fasted 40 day 49, that attack on? Why not when he was not just coming from the mountain? Why? Why he was just coming from mountain and he was fire? The greatest temptation Jesus received was after 40 day 49, that moment, immediately. As long as he did not go for 40 day 49, that temptation will have not come. Yes. So when you are more of God, you should be ready. If Satan used cutlass, he will drop the cutlass and begin to use machine gun. Because when he used cutlass on you to cut you, to cut you, you refuse to cut. Instead, you move close to the Savior. You need machine gun. You should draw strength from that weakness. Not weakness from weakness, but strength from weakness. Are you with me? Draw what? From what? Can't you hear what Paul Apostle said? He said, when I'm weak, then... What is the meaning of that? Me, I draw strength in my weakness as i'm standing here i'm weak but the strength is beside me before me behind me always when i move and weak the strength follow me that is i mean in the inside like a kid run me strength but me, weak. When I do like this, I rest on the strength, on the strength, behind, they say, Emmanuel, mean God with me. What is the meaning of that? If God be with you, why do you need God to be with you? Because you are weak. Why do you need God to be before you? Because you are weak. Why do we need God to be beside you? Because you are weak. If you are not weak, you don't need anything to be with you. He will have leave you alone to work on your own because you are weak. He'll be with you before you, after you, behind you. He's with you because you are weak. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all and all. I'm seeking you as a precious juice. Lord, to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all.